Uh, welcome in an 11 and 1 victory Monday across the board, but it's not always a victory Monday on this show if, in fact, the Philadelphia Eagles win because Philly Boy Sports Bets handles the betting aspect of the entire sports landscape locally, of course, but whatever we may have, including, of course, college football. The playoffs are set right around the corner. We have a bunch of odds happening left and right. I have already made a purchase order, Harry Mays, Matt Cherico on Charleston Southern tonight. So college hoops is rolling. Now, let us begin with the best and the worst of the weekend. We'll bounce around here. I will begin because the worst for me, I think, was the best for a lot of people, maybe from a pocket or just from a heart standpoint. But the gutless, truly gutless performance of the Tennessee Titans at six and a half when I got in. Yeah. Watching this thing hover around four at some point and then seeing all of the things go wrong for the Titans from injury to just not using Derrick Henry, all of that. That was absolutely the the worst of it. The best for me was, I can't say my guy because Harry Mays has claimed to him on this show, but Dan freaking Campbell letting <laughs> his hair down and slamming the shit out of the Detroit Lions. So I was able to make up a bunch on that game. Now, I mean, there were some other worst ones for me, Miami, Chicago, but I just had to pick one bad for me, Harry. Yeah, I was thinking of you during that Niners-Dolphins game yesterday oh afternoon, especially after Ooh. Jimmy Garoppolo went out yep. with the foot injury. Now he's gone for the year. A couple of big injuries to quarterbacks in both college and pro this weekend that True. affected a lot of these games. And that's where I'll start with my worst. The USC fighting Trojans oh, and man. Caleb freaking Williams get out to a 17-3 lead on Utah and frittered it all away. And I know he banged his hand and he had a bloody hand and then he injured his hamstring, I guess, in the second half. But he was trying to play hero ball that whole second half. He couldn't move, so he's getting sacked left and right. Everything was a second and third and long. It was an absolute freaking disaster. And Utah made every goddamn big play there was imaginable. Oh USC God. couldn't tackle. That tight end's just taking it safety. Boom! Get out of my way. I'm going to, I'm going to the end zone. It was like the Ohio State-Michigan game all over again. Yeah. But USC was Ohio State. Absolute disaster. And then the next day, this freaking Rice Plumley jerk has a bad hamstring all week, and these colleges have to start letting this information out. There's too much money at stake on, on legalized gambling now Harry. with college football. It's a freaking joke. And the backup yeah. said, I'm not going to uh, burn my red shirt. So they had to go to the third stringer. Right, right. No, here's Awful. the thing. Aaron Rodgers came out last week following the Eagles game and said he was playing with a broken thumb. That wasn't on the injury report all year. Wow. So if you're not going to get Aaron Rodgers, you sure as hell are not going to get Miles Plumley or whatever the hell his name is out right. here. Uh, another Plumley sibling just hadn't. Had no, the, they're not it. related. <laughs> all, those, all those Plumley kids from Duke. No, I don't no. think they're related. No, 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 no. Uh, all right, Jericho, what do you got? Yeah, I got beat pretty badly on the same USC game that <laughs> Harry's talking about. I mean, I had the team total over 32 and a half. So after 14 first quarter points, I was feeling, you know, pretty confident. Yeah. And then, like you're saying, they just ultimately squandered. My oh. worst NFL beat of the weekend had to be the Falcons uh, dropping the ball to the Steelers. So many opportunities within that game to really get the offense going. Even they had uh, the rookie Drake London catching a ton of passes this weekend. But still, I mean, you would think you had Marcus Mariota slinging the ball. Cordero Patterson's the least of your worries at that point, but he just couldn't find the end zone for them. But I was able to make it up. I had uh, the Eagles minus four, uh, Packers minus three, and then Harry's team total on the over in a three-leg parlay of the Lions game. Lions, so yeah. I was able to make up with uh, with that right there. Nice. Yeah, I, I did well in the NFL. I mean, I, I made it all back. I mean, the over in that Jacksonville-Detroit game. Uh, I teased the Washington football team through zero, and yeah. it came through for me. I needed it. In well, that I teased stupid the Giants tie. the other way. Did so you? Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could either yeah. way that teaser is going to work. Right. Right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and then the Eagles, of course, uh, was the other part of that teaser. So that, that right. was OK. But, man, I'll tell you, the Eagles. I mean, were you more impressed with the Eagles or more disappointed in the Titans? Aton? No. I OK. So I'm more impressed with the Eagles because there was one thing that I haven't seen since Patrick Mahomes. Now, he's done it a couple of times, but not really this year. 
but I haven't really seen since Mahomes. Like, not even Brady was dynamic enough to do this, but Jalen Hurts was so dynamic yesterday, fellas, that he took Derrick Henry out of a football game. Mm. That's how crazy that was. Like, the defense was there, and, and they did their job. All, 11, everybody wants to talk about it, right? Everybody's all Josh giddied up about 30-some-odd yards on the ground. 11 carries. Yeah. Ele that doesn't happen unless Jalen Hurts and the offense do what they did. So I think I was more impressed with Jalen Hurts first. But look, you lose Traylon Burks. You didn't have Luan. You already lost another lineman, another one down in the second half. They lost their best cornerback. Like, it was a shit show of injuries there. So I get what you're saying. But yeah. no, to answer the question, I was way more impressed with just Hurts outpacing and taking Derrick Henry. Like, it's yeah. hard to take an offensive guy to take another offensive guy out of a game. It is. And, of course, the A.J. Brown uh, props were were nice. To, yep. I knew yep. I knew he'd be – I just know the, the way the Eagles – too, man. I know the way the Eagles operate by now. I should know it because I've been watching them all right. these years, but that's what they do. Right. And did you know this Field Yates guy put out a tweet saying the Eagles are just the third team in the last 90 seasons – to rush for 350 plus and then pass for 350 plus in back-to-back -back games. Who are the other teams? Uh, he doesn't list that. He says they're the sixth team ever with 20 plus passing TDs and 20 plus rushing TDs through 12 games. And they're second in total defense. That's dominance right Look, there. That's, that's what we saw for the most part with the Wentz here. Yeah. 2017 we, right i mean we yeah. saw a team that was putting up points and we saw a top three defense every week like whatever yeah. the standings and the ratings were we saw a top three defense every week and you know they had a pretty good kicker like mm -hmm. like all this man it, look this this eagles team at this point i don't know what's left to bet on outside of week to week right like i right. think we're a pretty good teaser piece but Nobody in their right mind should be taking Jalen Hurts at plus 100 when he was like 20 times that right at the start of the For year. For MVP. Or bet yeah. the Eagles to win the Super Bowl right now. Like all the value on the Eagles sucked out. But I don't know. I mean, at this point, would you get in early and tease, tease them down to a half a point? I already got them at minus six. There you go. I mean, uh, I, think, I think one of the most like refreshing things about this game, because we've said it a couple weeks before, uh, that the Eagles tend to play down when they see injuries on the other side. They tend down, they tend to play down to their opponents. We saw it with the Texans, things like that. So it was kind of refreshing to see them come in and dominate the game from every standpoint yesterday. They never really took their foot off the gas. Yeah. And I feel like if they really want to be that dominant team in the NFL, that's what they have to do throughout the all four quarters. They made it kind of boring, but I know the you know the coaching staff will still have something to grind on because that offensive line committed so many freaking penalties. That's what made that game yeah. take forever. I mean, what they have like 11 or 12 accepted 11. penalties, and I think most of practically every one was the offensive line. Five false starts and a home game in the first yeah. half. Yeah. In a home game. So that'll give the coaches something to grind on. They love having something that they can get in your, your rear end about. Uh, for an 11 and one team, how much could yeah. they be, right? Well, you know, you, you bring that up, and I think you're right from where we are in the bubble. But look, the reality is that Miles Sanders to Brandon Graham to Aaron Sipos, like I don't care who the hell's on the team. They're not like no offense to anybody out there, but these guys aren't listening to Angelo Cataldi. They're watching first take. They're watching Skip and Sh Uncle Shannon. Like, these are the shows they're watching. So my guess is that they took their cues from Sunday night, and the leadoff on Monday is the Dallas Cowboys. Uh -huh. 54 points, all this. So if I'm the Eagles, I'm like, wait a second. We're 11 and one. I got Stephen A. Kellerman yelling about one thing. Oh. I got Shannon Smith saying the other thing. Like, what the hell's going on here? Where are we getting low? We're the fourth block on yeah. first take this morning and by the way they should just be watching carton in the morning that's the most entertaining morning television sports show there is forget about boomer and geo he's Who? a stiff yeah exactly and forget about first take and get up and all I'll that just say that that's what they're watching yeah how about like grand that? calcaterra no <laughs> oh i thought that he... was greg calcaterra no it's grant oh okay okay <laughs> holy shit. sixth round pick out of smu yeah yeah, uh, just got my Capital One Bowl Mania 2022. We're live. Oh, yeah? I I, uh, I ended in the uh, 82 percentile yesterday. All wow. right, so uh, anything else? Let's, let's look at this. Um, all right, overall, 
Last week we had two. I had two look aheads that I hit you with on Monday, right? Mm -hmm. And the first one was clearly a bust, which was the Titans at plus six and a half, plus six. Didn't work. The other, and I can't believe I'm sitting here saying this. The other was the Seahawks mm -hmm. at minus three and a half that barely covers by the skin of my teeth. Right, but that went to seven, didn't it? Well, it went up to seven and a half, seven Harry. And a half, and it okay. came out that they had the flu, right. and it was bet through seven down to six and a half. So I ask, and, and you know, we're, we've got a bunch to hit in college here, but it's still, you know, we're going to hit Monday Night Football in a second. Mm -hmm. But since the Eagles, you mentioned you already got the Eagles. Minus six. six. Right, right, minus six. So I have a couple of games that I got in on the opening line. Uh, I'll end, but Harry, Matt, if you don't, that's fine. But I'm just curious, outside of the Eagles, did you guys get in anything else? Look at I'm taking a bite out of the Jets plus nine and a half against Buffalo. Buffalo? Yeah. It is in Buffalo, correct? Yes, it is. And it's Buffalo's first time home in like six months. Now. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's been a while. Buffalo, I don't know. I kind of like that as well because we saw the Jets can compete with these high oh, offenses. They should have like, won that game. They, yes, yeah, they yeah, could have. They yeah, definitely they should have. Brilliant. At least cover, yeah. too. That yeah. was a, a sneaky backdoor cover by the Vikings that, I don't know, it was a little fishy to me. But looking ahead right now, um, I got to say, I think I, I might like the Thursday night game. The Raiders minus, or not minus, uh, plus five and a half. If I could tease that one against the Rams. I don't understand why the Rams at home are so heavily underdogged here. I really right. think that their offense, they're getting guys back healthy. I think that. They have a shot. I mean, if you have Matt Stafford back as well, I don't see why they're so so low on this. Raiders Plus are playing 200. better though. They um, are. They, they, they definitely are. They're covering yeah. spreads yeah. or they're winning. Like it's one right. or the other. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I the coaching staff. I just I just can't trust them beyond how much I trust Sean McVay, and that's ultimately what I think it's going to come down to. I think the Rams are still, despite all the drama that they have, I think they're still a better team at heart. So I think that's what I'm going to lean wow. on for the plus wow. five and a half. I, uh, that is a bold statement. Seriously. I, I, oh, look, my that goodness. Means, you have all the bragging rights of the world. But, <laughs> my, man, like, you're putting your money on the Rams Thursday night. Why not wow. just go under the total? I don't, I don't like the Raiders. Something about the Raiders, like I know Josh Jacobs had that, you know, miracle run last week with his two touchdowns winning the game. And yesterday we saw Derek Carr and Devontae, they kind of got something back going. Yeah, but, but they're beating bad teams. Does, does that's that what count? I, I Rams are a the bad Rams team. Are, the Rams, I guess you could consider a bad team with you Bryce guess, Perkins yes. out there. They Thanks. got Perkins. Thanks. I'd rather go eat at Perkins than watch Perkins. Wow. All right. Now, by the way, Perkins has its own bakery. They do. They bake. Oh, you see, that is an under on the premises. I, yes, wow. on the premises. So if wow. you ever wanted a DoorDash Perkins restaurant, make sure that you get the desserts mm. because I'm telling you, that is baked on site. All right, and it's almost like they pulled somebody's nana out of their house. Right. And said, All right, you know, we'll we'll pay you five seventy five a day. Right. Uh, Raiders <laughs> minus six. Geez, I, I can't no, do it. No, uh, no, Rams, oh, Rams plus, plus five and a okay. half. Yeah. Okay. But well, I, I was even willing to, to tease that with another one. Um, I was looking right now, and I think Lamar Jackson ultimately is going to be healthy coming into this next week. So right now, hopping on the money line of the Ravens, if you wanted to take that, or if we're doing a teaser, you could add in that plus one and a half going up against the Steelers. So, man, I don't know about. Him. I, I I'm not betting against Pittsburgh until proven otherwise. You you got some bold stuff I'll going on. You, I don't trust. I just like Kenny Pickett. He didn't throw that interception for me yesterday, and now he's going on a month straight with no you know mistakes out there that are really detrimental to their team. I think the Ravens have a good enough defense with their acquisitions close to the deadline now to where they can make some noise. And I think they are a Super Bowl contending team. If everybody is on the field. That was a stinky, ugly game yeah, yesterday, man. They just don't really... have the weapons. Yeah. And that's really what it comes down to, man. That's the thing, though. Without Lamar, they are Denver. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's tough. But I don't even know if their defense, like their defense is their secondary, at least. You mentioned the linebacker. Like, you know, they, they made a move or two. All right, hey, look, you are on record, sir. So there it is. Uh, I jumped on the Vikings on the road, minus 120 mm. in Detroit. Look, I, I'm wow. I love this dude. I'm You're going against my dude. guy. I just need him to win, baby. All right, Minnesota is on a nice little heater right now. Yep. And I think there's something to surviving a game like that. Like, there's nothing to let down from. No. Mike White screwed up. You didn't right. do anything, right? So I think Detroit, look. 
Detroit is still not a great team, so I think at some point the wheels are going to fall off. That might have been what happened with Washington technically falling off, even though they're so good that they only draw. So I jump on Minnesota minus 120. I also jumped on the Patriots at Arizona. Mm, now, this is Monday my night. birthday. Correct. Yeah. So I thought I'd put a ton on it, but I figured, you know what? I'm just going to play one bet on my birthday, and that's it. And this is the only bet across the board on December 12th that I will play. And this will be what the universe will return and tell me if I'm either doing something I should be or get the hell out of the business. All right. So I'm letting the universe, I'm letting the cosmic forces out there dictate. Wait a Patriots second. Patriots minus 120. Just win, baby. Wait right? a second. So if the Cardinals win that game, you're out of the business? No, I, I think it's just a message. It's oh. a definitive message that I am going against what the universe has asked of me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, this isn't one of these, if I don't hit this right. bet, I'm quitting. No, 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 no. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> uh, I did hit the Bengals minus four and a half right now hosting Cleveland. Mm. Cleveland, look, Deshaun Watson is not fixing this thing overnight. No, 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 no. And they ain't scoring two defensive touchdowns and one Donovan Peoples. That was return. absurd yesterday. Right? Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, no, by all means. So I did that. And then one, because I know Harry loves a teaser. I teased the Seahawks down to a pick 'em, and I teased the Chiefs down to minus two and a half. Mm. All right. Now, anything tonight? Let's begin tonight before co- uh, b- uh, we end on some college shit. Well, I can't take the Saints. I got to go Tampa Bay minus three in this game. Harry, I got to do it. It's Is that fine. all you're doing? Uh, well, I'm it's looking fine at. If that is. I'm just. I'm curious. looking at a Mike Evans over 60 and a half receiving yards. He's been averaging 69, almost 70 per game the, you know, this season. He gets at least eight or nine targets a game, you know, five receptions per game. I can see him going over 60 and a half. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at the history of, like, Tom Brady against the Saints. And since he's been with Tampa Bay, obviously it hasn't been good. Aside no, they lose the regular win. season games. It's yeah, they, he has the one win earlier this season in September, mm-hmm. but – um. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm going to stay away from picking either side of that. Uh, I liked an Andy Dalton interception for minus 140. Um, I also liked Will Lutz over one and a half field goals tonight mm. for uh, minus 120 on there. And then I did have one extremely long shot because I know Aton likes to come with these. And the tight end, 270-pound tight end for the Bucks, Co Keeft. Yeah, right? he's, he's paid for us big time. He's plus 1,200 right now to put one in. And I think there could be some value there, just considering Tom Brady loves to get to the goal line and then do those little dump offs to his tight end. So I don't know. I think you could uh, you could find some value in plus twelve hundred for that one. All right, wow. I I don't hate it by any means. Uh, I am on the other side of Harry and and what might be some of what you are, but that's what makes this show great. Uh, I am riding. Baltimore really screwed me because I had three teasers that would have hit so long as I had, uh, and the lowest one was Baltimore minus one and a half. So to lose a four leg teaser by Baltimore, not covering a one and a half point line was rough. I have one left and it's the giants plus nine, the jets plus 10, the bears plus 10 and a half, which I really needed. And new Orleans plus 10 and a half. So I am on that side. Technically new Orleans plus 10 and a half. Uh, I did take one field goal first half each in this game. Took it last Mm. night, Sunday night football. There were two times in which the Colts had stops on third down that was either a penalty or just Dallas just manhandled them. So this is a good play. I still like this bet. I I took that. I went under 22 and a half team total for the Bucs. And I'm tempted to go under 41 for the game. But Mm. I'm I'm not on a side right now like i'm not i didn't bet a side right now like what's open oh no i am i'm sorry i am why the hell is this not up here on my contradicting like i'm on the saints statistics i'm on on the saints interesting yeah so i'm on the saints plus i don't know why this never made my damn sheet uh 11 30. i'm on the saints plus four and a half under 42 and a half in a Mm. same game parlay that's what it is. Sorry. I was looking for that. I apologize. I that's found solid. it. solid. Four and a half and 42 and a half. Solid. Well, that's a plus 200 same game parlay on DK. Okay. So, look, I'm I'm with you. Three, you know, Brady, man. You see these numbers for Brady, 
right? They're it's lackluster true. against the Saints. I mean, right. aside from his Patriots days, like. Well, here's the thing: his Bucks have played New Orleans. He's gone one and four straight up against the spread. He's thrown seven TDs in those five games to eleven turnovers. So, if you want a long shot here, he's at in five games. He's averaging two point two turnovers per game. If you wanted to play a defensive slash special team score for New Orleans, I think you're going to get one and a half to maybe two opportunities to turn Brady over. So that's at like plus 800, 750 or plus so. Plus 800, yeah. That's not bad mm -hmm. right there. Not bad. Mm -hmm. And then how about this? He's seven and six straight up, three and 10 against the spread in regular season night games. <laughs> Here Come it on, is. Man. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> This the night, Bucks. Night. The Bucks have to win this game. They do. They, they have they to. Backs against against the wall. Don't they? Yeah, they're at home. I like them. Uh, we 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 all right. Anything else? I, by the way, I'm on uh, Kent State tonight. Kent State. Yeah, they're taking on Gonzaga. They're getting 15 mm. against Gonzaga, and I still think this is too big of a number for me. So I jumped on Kent. Kent State's a good basketball team. People just don't know about them. Are they the uh, the, the the beast of the MAC? They are. They're macking yeah. out this year. Okay. They are macking out. Well, I'll tell you, a look, yeah. a look ahead line Holland. that just reached out and slapped me in the face is Tulane plus one against USC. And take them on the money line, too. That's the cotton ball. Tulane. USC is just zero interest in playing. Exactly right. <laughs> yeah. And Tulane gets a notch on their belt. Hey, man, we got to right. knock off USC. Right. Hey, I don't, I don't hate it. We took out the reason. Heisman winner. You want it? Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So do you have it in front of you? I, I have it on the, I thought it was the global, right? Uh, no, that's on DK. All right. So I have right now, Michigan is minus nine. The over under is 60. Georgia's minus seven. That total is 60 and a half. Mm -hmm. It looks like the Heisman is down to right now. Max Duggan and Caleb Williams. And Williams. Yeah. yeah. But it looks like. Williams is pretty much the lock, right? Yeah, if I had a vote, I'd give it to Duggan after what I witnessed Friday night. But I don't have a vote, so who cares? No. I mean, my God, this guy was off the board more than he was on the board this year, Duggan. I love watching him play, though. He's kind of like a hybrid of Tebow and Josh Allen. You know, can I? and, and I don't disagree with that by any means. I, I think you're right, though, that he's got that truck body, right? Yeah. That... that and, but he's, he's not got, as big as Josh Allen. No, he, no, I mean, no. He he plays the same type of game. That his arm is, surprises right. me at times. Yeah, yeah. With his throwing ability, for sure. Yeah. Can I, if, if we're making an argument for somebody other than Caleb Williams, why not in a year in which he had to show that he's not just there handing the football off? Why wouldn't Stetson Bennett get some love here? Yeah. All he does is win. And and he's and he's throwing though this yeah. year, at least yeah, a little more touch. What they right? put up fifty the other night? Against just, LSU? Yeah, I don't yeah. I don't know why he's and he's got the same 16 to 1 odds as Duggan. And these are the two longer shots because clearly at 25 to 1, CJ Stroud is not no. going to win it. But I'm with you. I mean, I think you can make a sound argument for Duggan and for Bennett right now. Now, here's the question. Stuff changes all the time. So while Caleb Williams is a heavy favorite right now, could he lose it? And if so, does it make sense to place a small wager on either one of those guys? I don't think he can lose it at this point. You don't think Caleb Williams can lose it? I think you're right. I mean, I'd love to see Duggan get it. Me but, too. Yeah. I just don't think he can lose it. Yeah. yeah. There's just not enough football left at this point in order to uh, really to, to lose that. It's well, no, they lose. they got to vote before the bowl game. They, like the bowl games don't even count. Oh, they don't. They don't no. count in playoffs. Okay. No. That makes sense. All right. Yeah. We have these four playoff games. We're going to talk more about this Wednesday, Friday, yeah. moving forward and everything. I, I didn't play. I'm just trying to think and think and think. I don't te I don't think this line is going to drop. Like, I'd be shocked if Michigan kicks off favored by seven and a half. Mm -hmm. Unless somebody super sharp is, is smarter than me. The one that I was interested in, though. Could you see it going to 10? Yes. And yes. that's why I think maybe jumping on Michigan nine is okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like. I don't see Ohio State moving that through seven. Doesn't Georgia minus seven seem to be a pretty decent play now? Uh, I see minus six and a half. Oh, so it moved. It yeah. Didn't. What the hell am I talking about? Yeah. Unless it opened up there at a different place, which is possible. All right. 
All right. I like the two lane, man. Let's roll with that. The We're green wave. Wednesday. Yep. We got yep. a lot more to look at for bowls. All these bowls are going to be up. We'll go through. Yep. We're going to have to have like a bowl special. Right, where we just go through bowl after bowl after bowl. And we you eat, smoke a bowl beforehand, I'm right? right? Yeah. While eating a bowl of Lucky Charms. Exactly right. Absolutely. Nice. All right, for Cherico Maze, I'm Nate Temple. We'll see you.